Check it out, you guys. I have a killer video for you guys today. Visiting Mullis Race Car, specifically taking a look at the welding department that they have set up there. The welders that they have on board over at Mullis, just primo, premium skills going down over there at Mullis. Super, super pumped about this video. But quickly, quickly, just real quick reminder, pre-entry for Cash Harvest opens on March 18th. That's a Friday noon central time. It'll be linked down in the description. Pre-entry opens March 18th. You guys set a reminder on your phone, uh, set an alarm, whatever you need to do, delegate it to a family member. If you're busy, you don't wanna miss this event, specifically the Mullis Race Cars Dragster Shootout. You guys, 64 entries racing for a brand new dragster. I've had a lot of questions on this. This is going to be a base chassis brand new 2022 model i will link you to the description of the car down in the description of this video so you can go ahead and click that link that'll take you to the mollus race cars facebook page go ahead and hit the like button while you're there and then you can check out all the deets of what's going to be given away at cash harvest again pre-entry for the mollus shootout and the entire double 11k event it's happening March 18th, noon central time. Now let's take a look at some of these Mullis cars and if you're on the fence, this will probably convince you to just go ahead and get into this shoot. Check it out you guys, I got an absolute treat for you guys. I'm going on a field trip. To Mullis Race Cars. I'm hanging out here at the Mullis Race Cars headquarters as you can see. Three brand new hot rods being built behind me. There's more on the welding jigs in the other room. Taking the opportunity to hang out with Toby and Glenn, the entire team here at Mullis, and uh, to get to know their business a little bit better and to get to know their race cars a little bit better. try to keep everything efficient here you know tubing will come in all chrome molly we use do cool on some things we'll go right on the tubing rack right over to our saw gets cut right onto a cart and then every tube gets polished you know inspected and made sure there's no dents or any imperfections in it and then we'll wrap it up into kits on different sections of the car and then we'll pull the kits out cut them open and then we'll fit the floor then we'll do back half, then upper frame rails, and there's foot box. I'll fit the cage, and the front half, and then the last part is the swing arm, or the control arms. So, and then this car is actually just about to be done. The, we're just finishing up the control arms, and then those will be, this car will be done. It'll go on our rotisserie over there where Justin will finish weld it. How long? of a process is it, would you say, for like one car to go from the rack to you're be done with it and it's ready for finish welding? For finish welding is about 50 to 55 hours. So a little more than a week. You do, it takes you a little more than a week to do one, right. to do your part of it. Right, and then Justin, for finish welding and tabbing, will take 30 to 35 hours. And in that time, he'll go over and cut and polish tubes. We also have, uh, a couple other employees from our sister companies come over and they like to help, you know, they just want to be a part of the race car thing. So it's a, it's cool. it's a happy family. Yeah. So and they all want to chip in because they want to come over and yeah and work here full time. So it's kind of They're jealous. Yeah. <laughs> like you get to work on race cars all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Man. Tell me a little bit about you. How long, I mean, how, obviously we know how long you've been working at Mollus, but give me the, give me the background a little bit further back from that. How long you've been doing the race car stuff? Uh, it actually started uh, in 2010. I got a scholarship to go to Ohio Technical College for high performance. And from there, I went to Coletta Motorsports. I did cylinder heads in the body on the DHL Funny Car for two years with Jeff Wren and Del Worsham. Um, Jeff Wren's my boy. And uh, from there, I went over to Thor Sport Racing, which is a NASCAR truck team. 
Um, got a championship with uh, Matt Crafton. And after that, worked for a company called Big Three Racing in Medina, Ohio. Their streetcar tuner place. Do some high-end badass builds. Was there for six months, so it was kind of in a transition period. And then uh, applied at Schumacher. Didn't get the job there. And I passed force on the way, and I pulled in their driveway, and they're like, we're looking for, you, for a guy like you. So worked there for six years as the uh, lead dragster fabricator. I also did about 60% of the funny cars, too, along with the bodies. So That's a heck of a resume, man. Yeah. And now you're right here, and you're going to probably be the one welding my race car together. Well, he'll be the one welding it. We got we got a top-notch crew over here at Mullis Race Cars. You, that is a that's an outstanding resume, man. You do outstanding work here. Thank you. What else do I need to know about what's going on here on your fit-up table? Just try to keep everything as precise as possible. It fits tight as can be. You know, we don't skimp. We try to do everything to the highest level of and SFI compliant and above and beyond. You know, Glenn's been really open to a lot of my opinions with the fuel side of things on um, the way that we did like implemented like a little bit more safety stuff reinforcing places that may you guys might not need but if you put a 2500 horsepower engine in these things it's not it's ready, for it. it's ready for it so in fuel we we paid a lot of attention to the front half because that's where the car gets up on arch we didn't have a suspension so mm -hmm. when the car went up on arch that's when it actually hooked better so playing with the front half was definitely the magic in both top fuel and funny car because we did different slips in different places and funny car too so that's cool this is where the magic happens that is cool so this is just as much of a suspension as that is so and if you're doing running a rigid tail obviously you want to play with the front half a little bit more even from adjusting lengths here you know in your slip joints up front but obviously you want to keep longevity with your, you know, you guys are going thousands of runs on a front half, not 75, so. Dropping some serious knowledge out here. I'm learning some things. These boys at Mullis definitely know what they're doing out here. Man, this is impressive. How long have you uh, been well in race cars? Like, is Mullis not probably your first go around? Right? Uh, cars like this, six months now, yeah. Um, but uh, I do a lot of door cars and uh, road course cars. Grid life stuff and drag racing stuff, so uh, that kind of stuff probably four years, four and a half years now. So yeah, but this stuff is pretty new to me. Like these cars are totally different. Welding on a rotator and everything's exposed and easy. You know, it's really nice. So so, so you're you're liking the mullet steel, right? Now. Yep. Yeah, and everything's really clean. You don't have to crawl around in a cage car. That's really nice. What's it like working for Glenn and Toby? Oh, they're super nice dudes. Uh, Glenn is one of the most relaxed bosses. Very, he's very like caring, making sure everything's going well and the process is fluid. And these two, uh, the shop morale is good. Lots of joking and yeah, I don't know. We haze each other a lot, but it helps the days go by. So, so you're having fun and you're working on race cars. Yeah, you don't get better than that, right, man? All right, what else can you ask for? So the jig is set up. If someone orders a wider cage or, or a, you know, is there just one standard cage size or is there different like 24 We're, inch and 20 or So whatever? we can, this is adjustable at these points to go all, all the way up oh, to okay. a, a 23 to a 25 is how our jig's set up right now. Okay. And really 25 is as comfortable as we can be as far as bowing these bars out and everything like that and our seats fitting along with our dashes fitting. So there's a lot more to it than just. So when someone orders a car, uh, if it lands between 23 and 25, that's that's basically standard for you guys. Yes, our standard car is a 24 inch. Sure. So 24 to your standard width there. So awesome. then we've actually bumped our cage height up an inch recently too. So we having AJ Ash as one of our drivers. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's 6'8", so. He has to fit in there. Yeah, we go from Kendra Larson, who's what five two, to AJ <laughs> Ash, who's six eight, and trying to make everybody comfortable is hard. But we try to make these as universal as possible. So sure. And then you'll have me in there, and I've always have like a 
like a three to four inch booster seat in mine just because I want to be up as high as I can in there. I prefer, I prefer to have those ones that need a little cushion, not yeah. the people that are hunching over like yeah, this. Absolutely. So. absolutely. I hope you guys enjoy this little behind the scenes of the fabrication, fit up, and welding operations that go down over at Mullis Race Cars. You guys, links to Mullis are down in the description below. Please give them a look if you're in the market for a new race car. I can't speak highly enough about the guys and all the work that they're doing over at Mullis, and I hope this video just kind of helped convey that to you guys. If you're in the market for a race car, go and look them up. Links are down in the description. Hope to see a lot of your guys' faces at Cash Harvest, August 26th through the 28th at Cedar Falls Motorsports Park. Again, pre-entry opens on March 18th, noon central time. See you guys then. Later.